what's going on youtube welcome to my youtube channel today we're going to go over is listing 10 things a day on ebay actually working and it is it's truly truly working no bs um a little quick background on me if it's your first time tuning in my channel uh, i've been on ebay for quite some time many many years and i'll take breaks i don't do this full time i try and spend 10 15 hours a week um, main concentration lately has been getting rid of some older items after moving Trust me, guys, everyone can find stuff when you move. Um, so this is basically for anyone that um, sells on eBay consistently, or maybe you don't, maybe you're interested in selling on eBay. But bottom line, listing 10 items a day absolutely will boost your sales. And based, you know, it, it'll just make you concentrate more on your store. And it, it doesn't take that much time to list 10 items. Um, I've been kind of cheating a little bit. I've been doing uh, CDs, but I have actually bought jewel cases. So I've been like taking apart my old CDs from the 90s when I was a teenager in my 20s and uh, just listing them on eBay because I don't really have a CD anymore. I think we have Journey in the car as the CD and it's in the actual CD player of our car, but I don't have like cases of CDs and we do the satellite radio and all that stuff too when we're traveling. So um but just me getting up 10 CDs a day, along with coins and other items that I find around my house, uh, have definitely boosted my sales uh, to the tune of uh, over 100% um, since the last month. So like every time you look on eBay, it's like a year, uh, uh, it's a month over month uh, analyzation. So the last seven days I've uh, reported $1,641.67 in total sales um after selling costs which are like ebay fees uh taxes and shipping uh and cost of goods i'm at 573 dollars in total profit which is awesome really really awesome uh if you guys were to put that in actual real life like this is your job and your take-home pay is 573 dollars a week that's like earning almost thirty thousand a year after taxes so that's probably like someone that makes forty-five thousand a year so it's exciting um i actually enjoy uh reselling on ebay um i like to put myself in the perspective of a buyer so i like to basically give everyone a good experience um do the best i can to get the items out right away i'm at a main uh, post office here where i live it's very close to o'hare airport so one of the main major hubs where the post office operates out of, whether it's via land or air, um, they get the packages out to the uh, my buyers very, very quickly. Even my international buyers get their items usually a few days faster just because of where I live. But it doesn't matter, guys. The listing 10 a day is absolutely um, blown my sales out of the water. Also, what helps too is I've gone to my local coin shop. I did spend $1,000 on inventory. I've sold $800 um, in pro not in profit, but in retail from that purchase. And with the coin shops, I like to at least make, you know, five, 600 bucks on a thousand dollar purchase because it takes a lot of time going through each coin. I do videos on it and it's fun. So those of you who watch my channel based on silver dollars and cool coins and stuff I pick up, I do that basically for myself, but also to educate others. I'm like, hey, this is what, you know, coin collecting is all about. And you can make some nice profits on it. And I do have the advantage of a really nice coin shop. It's a little further than me now since I moved, but um, love those guys there. It's a family run business. They're huge. And um, every time I go in there, I try and spend at least a thousand dollars to make it worth my time and their time dealing with me. So anyways, I wasn't expecting the support. So I appreciate all you guys that do watch my channel and purchased silver dollars for me. It was awesome. But um, some of you got some discounts too, which it, whatever, like, I don't care. I'm here to share that, um, that aspect of my channel, uh, out for others. So anyways, wanted to show, uh, what recently sold. And I always like to watch this on other people's videos. So, um, it's the best way to do this here. Let me pause it real quick. Oh, and real fast. I wanted to just show like, here's where my sales were before. I mean, there's days I didn't sell anything. And then the last three weeks, so the beginning of August, I've been listing consistently 10 items a day. So here you got $196 a day, 
95, 234. I mean, that, look at that, guys. 144% increase uh, in the last 30 days. And my, my goal is eventually, as I, you know, if I do this more of a, on a part time job basis, but I don't really consider a job because it's fun for me, um, I'd like to at least get $300 on average in sales. And seriously, this past week, um, I've averaged $234 a day, which is a lot for me, a lot. So I know some of you other resellers that maybe watch this are like, that's nothing, man. I spend, you know, I get $1,000 in sales a day. Well, that's great. You might have more expensive items in your store, or you might have, you know, 10,000 items in your store. I have 1,400 items in my store. My sell-through rates, have, it's gone down a little bit because I've been listing less desirable things. But again, there are my personal things, so I don't care if they sit a little bit longer. If I was just concentrating on the stuff that I buy to resell, um, I'd like at least a 100% sell-through rate on that, meaning anything I list is gone within 90 days. Because Otherwise, like, why buy it? Why put the money into it? So just want to show you guys a very, very transparent. Uh, this year I've done 30,000 in sales. There's been years too where I've had way more sales when I was doing a lot more coins. Um, but then I had to tone it down a little bit because my real job got a lot busier and it makes a lot more sense for me to put my hours and time into my real job. So again, this is for fun and anyone can do this, which is what's really cool about eBay. Um, and I'm not going to be a sellout, uh, go whatnot. Like to me, that's the most ultimate sellout. You're no longer a reseller on eBay. You are just, you know, YouTube influencer, which whatever, like if that's your cup of tea, fantastic. But please don't tell me going to the flea market, buying a pair of dirty old shoes, overpaying for them like $15 and selling them for 25. will get you a custom home. Dude, that's total BS. So, um, I don't watch those channels anymore because they're just like, it's like a show which which is fine if that's your form of entertainment if you think it's very entertaining for people to go out grab complete garbage um you know sift through um the goodwill bins to get items and magically sell them for thousands of dollars of profit and then buy a custom home that to me is not real life um it is for their channel because they have you know hundreds of thousands of subscribers and people will overpay because they are fans of them. That's completely different. That is not, to me, real life. So hopefully you guys appreciate that. I will never sell out to whatnot, nor do I jump to other formats like Macari or all those other stuff that, you know, Depop, all those the other channels use. They're just trying to sell you on a product or a multi-format product where you can list one item and put it on 10 different sites. Seriously, eBay is complicated enough. No, thank you. And I think it's fine. As long as you concentrate on the things that actually do sell on eBay, um, things of that nature. So anyways, this is my uh, recent sales. So let me, I'm going to go, uh, the next part of this video is going to be basically showing you some of the items that I sold. And to me, when I'm watching other people's channels, that's very interesting to me because that's when I learn like, oh, I had no idea something like that had any value. And again, a lot of the stuff I had lying around my house. So let me pause it real quick and then I'll go into um, the sales this week, which were 45. Items. Okay. And then while I'm doing this, I wanted to show you. So if you, if you want to look up another YouTube influencer, and I'm not one by any means, but if you want to look them up and actually see what they sell on eBay, first of all, the, the fake ones or the ones that are like afraid don't even like for whatever reason put their eBay store in there. I don't know. That's weird to me. Like if you have hundreds of thousands of subscribers, why not put your eBay? store in your description of your video i never understood that but i'm very transparent i always put mine in my listings if the, if it's not in this listing video you can click on other videos i typically put a link to my store but ebay's changed the way to search someone's store and also search if that store owner or that ebay seller actually sells stuff so when you typically click on an item that is either listed or has been sold by uh, by that particular ebay person you have to go to their store then you have to click on one of the items in the store click view all details and then it'll bring you um you have to go to sellers other items here uh it's not working of course <laughs> hold on uh let's type in morgan there we go so you got to bring it to like this format not the store format and then there's this little button here so you can go to newly listed and again, just want to be really transparent. Let me get rid of Morgan here. 
So it'll now show all 1,424 items uh, in my store. And then you want to go again to most recently listed. So time newly listed. So this is the way too you can kind of tell if that person on YouTube is actually selling on eBay and not trying to sell you other crap. So again, I told you very transparent. I've been listing CDs. So you can see it's August 23rd, the filming of this video. I didn't list anything today, uh, but I did um, get up about 30 CDs late last night. So here's all my CDs and then you can see the date and I got top rated plus, which is cool. It was weird. So I forgot two items. I copy and pasted someone listing someone other, uh, some other person's listing. I think it's for some karaoke CDs. And for some reason I did not put 30 day um, return policy. So I think my store ran seriously for like a full month, even though I was a top rated seller and I was not getting the extra 10% off of seller fees discount because I had two items out of my 1400 items in my store that I did not put 30 day returns on. So eBay then sent me a message saying, Hey, do you want to be a top rated plus seller? I'm like, yeah, I thought it was. And they said, well, you have to put these two items you have in your store. You have to offer, you know, uh, same day, I think it's same day shipping or, or within a day shipping and you have to offer a 30-day return policy and again two items out of the 1400 i have listed on ebay were not 30 uh because i copied someone else's listing didn't have 30-day returns on it so those two items prevented me from saving 10 percent in my ebay seller fees so again if you work really really hard you do a good job listing your items showing pictures you don't deceive people you get the items to them right away if they have a problem with it and they return it to you, you give them a refund right away. Like, just don't fight with people on eBay. It's not worth it. Like, you're there to provide a service, put yourself in the shoes of the buyer, and you want a positive experience. Think about how much people buy from Amazon. Why do people buy from Amazon? Because A, they got good prices. They got a huge selection. And if you have a problem with something, they'll take it back. No questions asked, right? So if you want to be successful, you kind of have to mimic what's already working for one of the you know most successful companies ever. And that dude is a billionaire and that dude started with books. Books are boring. If you resell books, I feel sorry for you because they're heavy and they're boring, but who am I to say? I just don't read that much, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> so anyways, these are all the CDs I've got up and listed. Uh, and then you get into the Morgan Silver Dollars, which is another main reason why my sales have increased dramatically because I, put a thousand dollars into my business and obviously some of these items are pretty expensive but they're beautiful if you're not in the coins who cares if you have these laying around they're worth some money so um it definitely pays to get vested in them especially if they're in really good condition not just for the silver and then here's more cds so these are all the items i've been able to get up in the past uh seven days and it's definitely been over 70 items, which is cool. So again, another way to check someone on YouTube, if they do give you your eBay store, if you find their eBay store, is to look at their sold items. So is that person actually selling or are they just there on YouTube to cry to you and provide entertainment? Again, I used to watch a lot of those channels and some of them are like, why am I watching this person? They don't sell anything and all they do is cry and complain. And if I want to hear crying and complaining, um, you know, I, I'll, I'll hang out with, uh, with little kids. So anyways, here's the last, uh, th 90 days, 298 sales. And here are some recent sales. Also a Saudi Arabia, a uh, silver coin, um, an old backpack, Massimo backpack, uh, ladies, if you're watching, if you watch my channel, I had no idea Massimo is target. <laughs> so I thought it was a famous like Italian brand. Again, I know nothing about women's clothing or brands, doesn't Massimo sound like an Italian company? Anyways, maybe that was at one point in time until Target bought them out. Regardless, this is a very old uh, backpack book bag that one of my daughters used probably for a year. And someone reached out. They had never bought anything on eBay before. They can tell because they have a zero feedback. And they bought this bag. They asked me if there was any damage to it. And then they told me the story like, yeah, I had one of these. And then my sister like ripped it up and I, and I still like it. So I get it. Some people 
throughout high school, you get into a certain pattern and you want the same book bag that you're familiar with. So I thought it was cool that I had a book bag that was worth $11.96 to this person. And, you know, they paid $6 in shipping. So for under 20 bucks, they got the backpack that they had before. I think that's cool. Um, old Nintendo uh, AC adapter, an actual real AC adapter. So if you're out in estate sales and garage sales and someone's got a Nintendo system, I highly recommend breaking it all into different pieces. You'll get way more money versus if I would have included this with the handheld um, Nintendo DS, I would have got nothing for it because I would have just included it with the system. So it does make sense on Nintendo items to break up break apart if they're authentic nintendo items not the made in china knockoff stuff um, you can get more for them so this person paid 10 bucks with shipping another silver dollar here morgan silver dollar gotta have faith george michael that was a cd i had that was completely trashed like the the jewel case was all damaged let me show you guys real quick how i take photos of my cds which probably isn't the greatest job i don't have the best lighting in my photo booth so sometimes if the image is darker it reflects a lot but I take six photos of a CD, which is kind of stupid, right? It's like only $3. So maybe I made $1.48 after it was all said and done. But it literally took me less than 10 seconds to get this listed. I use their um, AI to describe the actual album. And then I'm very authentic when it comes to grading. So I will not list CDs that have holes or scratches on them. It's not worth the return. It's not worth the hassle. So, But I'm like the only one on ebay that actually spends the time to take six photos of the item so i think that's why like mine will sell when there's like a thousand available plus the fact that i'm top rated and i do promote i do pay ebay an extra 10 percent to sell these type of items because i don't care otherwise i'm just going to donate them and if i want to bring them to craigslist hunter he pays 25 cents a cd so i could be completely lazy i could have brought all i think i have 164 cds listed I could have brought them all to him, like 100 CDs. I would have walked out of his shop with 25 bucks. But then I would have a drive there. He's not too close to my house. And it only made 25 bucks. So I'm like, might as well. These, I think these are cool. They're from the 80s and the 90s. And by redoing the jewel cases on them, which those cost 60 cents a piece, I bought a, a bulk pack of 50. Um, it makes this look really nice. So I was able to revive over 50 of my CDs that had crack cases that looked like crap if you were to list it and everyone would ignore it. So I revived those and I got those up this week. That was probably not worth it, but like if I were to actually buy CDs actively and spend a dollar a piece, totally would not do it. It's not worth it. But because these were my own personal CDs and I don't use them anymore and I didn't want to donate them and I didn't want to drive to Craigslist Hunter to sell them for 25 cents a piece, I'm like, let me at least turn it into a store sale, positive activity helps with the eBay algorithm, all the good stuff. And CDs, six photos is all you need. Um, next item I thought was interesting. This is an old um, wire stripper, or not a wire stripper. This makes coax cables, and it crimps the cable connector to the coax cable. So the cable is what you, know, you typically would get for internet or if you still have cable TV or an antenna. So this particular device just crimps it down. These are like $100 tools. I just had it lying in the bag. It's like made out of this real weird specialized plastic. So if you see a Belden Thomas, this particular model in the wild and it's functioning, uh, it's $60 bill all day long. Took a little while to sell, but you never know what you're gonna find out there. Old silver Filipino World War II money that the US Mint makes. Uh, Filipino mint set from 1958 from a stamp company. Afrin Stamp Company out of Manila, Philippines. I was surprised how fast a lot of these Filipino uh, coins sold. And the U.S. Mint was the one. We were the ones printing out the, stamping out the coins. I don't know if we still make their coins, but that was pretty cool. Chicago CD. Uh, this one had a crack case in the listing. And the buyer of this was kind of new, too. So I put in the message. Well, they sent me a message saying, hey, look forward to getting this. And then I messaged them back saying, hey, just so you know, I got some new jewel cases and this one had a crack in it. So the one I'm sending you, I replaced the jewel case and she was super happy. I think her name was Shannon. So Shannon, if you watch my channel, great. If not, appreciate it. Um, this was a shark part. So I've on my third shark vacuum. I love the shark vacuums. 
And every time I buy them, they come with like all these different accessories. So I had two of these brand new and one of them used. And I'm like, this thing's been sitting in a bag, not doing anything for years. So I'm like, pretty sure someone like broke theirs or could use this attachment. And I looked it up. They go for like, you know, 18 bucks. So I, I got this one sold for $13. Again, just something I found lying around the house. If you have multiple vacuums that you've purchased in the past or your old vacuum broke and you still have the accessory packs laying in a bag somewhere, sell it off. Don't throw it in the garbage. Someone else can use this. Don't make it end up in a landfill. Don't donate it because they don't know what to do with something like this. Just list it on eBay. And if you need a new vacuum, use this money to apply towards your new vacuum. Um, this is an interesting item. So the house I lived in before had a um, sprinkler system uh, because the area I lived in is a larger house. And when you have a larger house over a certain square footage, because there's so many trees where we lived, um, it's required to have a active sprinkler system. And this was just like a spare part. It was in this like decayed box, looked like crap. And I opened the box. I'm like, oh, it's a bell. And I noticed I already had a bell installed. So the builder or whoever installed the sprinkler system had actually put, um, left their parts there. And this was brand new. So brand new bell. So if you see a big old red bell or this uh, brand Potter um, at a garage sale, you know, you never know. You might go to a garage sale of some installer stuff or someone at a flea market. Uh, it's a $50 bill. This one sold for $42.50 and the person paid six bucks and they're actually like three towns over. So chances are they needed this for their business or maybe where they live, they require to have a sprinkler system. So I thought it was cool because that had was not even mine. That was like the original homeowners that just like left it. So it's kind of cool to turn garbage into $50. That gets me excited. I don't know if you found it. Like if you're old, like the house you're living in um, and you're the old homeowner left you a bunch of stuff. And one of the items you could resell on, for, on eBay for 50 bucks. I think that's cool. I don't know. You guys, you guys tell me, maybe I'm, maybe I'm crazy. Um, uh, next item was just some old light bulbs I had lying around. I don't, I don't have this, uh, whatever this was purchased for. Uh, sometimes I go into Costco, I get a little crazy buying light bulbs. You get in that, like, I'm going to buy batteries in light bulb mode. And I just had some extras, uh, some old Jordan, uh, sweatpants that were in horrible condition. I think one of my daughter's friends left it one day. Cause I'm pretty sure I didn't buy this for my daughter or maybe one of the boys that came over when they were like in eighth grade or junior high. So that's what happened. Got That's what happened guys. When you, when you have kids, other kids come over, they have parties, whatever. And uh, sometimes those other kids will never ever pick up their clothes. They'll just leave them. So I was happy to <laughs> get eight bucks out of it. I don't know. Um, here's an old uh, BMW lanyard. These can go for some big bucks. So this one is not a cheap China remake. This is a true BMW one, even though it is made in China. Um, but you can tell on the authentic ones, the actual hook part or hardware of it is thicker and it's heavier duty. It's not that cheap, flimsy metal. So this was a real solid one. This might even be from my uncle in Germany from like the 90s or 80s. He might have sent it, you know, back in the day. But um, I think I let this go a little cheap, but again, Dude, this thing was sitting in my office. I've never used it. It's cool. It's silver. And it's a $12 bill. And it was just something I had lying around. Um, next item, do not, don't, don't list old magazines. This was the biggest mistake I've ever made in my life. So my wife's mom, real into like OK Magazine, Star Magazine, all that stuff. And I had like a stack, literally a stack, I think of over like 70 of them. And I'm like, well... I could either A, take these to the recycling bin, open it up and dump it, or maybe someone wants to buy this old stuff because it's, you know, it's getting a little older. So I'll sell one or two a month, but it's totally not worth it. Like, don't do it. Don't actively search out magazines unless they're like really old or it's someone like really famous. That's different. But the more modern ones, um, this is like weird unless like, I guess my thinking was like, oh, a dentist or doctor's office or a place where you wait, they might want to buy some of these magazines and you know, put in that. No, 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 that's, don't do it. And I bored and bagged them too. So I actually spent money on um, putting a, you know, the, the board behind it, like you would a comic book or an actual collectible magazine and then put like, you know, the plastic film over it. So 
I probably got like 50, 60 cents of material or um, display material. <laughs> I'm happy to sell it. Don't get me wrong for five bucks. Like that's cool. But in, in, in real life, like don't do it. It's even like the comics I listed. I got them so long ago, like don't care if they sell or not. But it was a lot of work taking photos, bag and boarding them, looking them up, listing them. It, it's dude, it's just not worth it. Like don't do it. Um, never got a refund though on a comic or a magazine. Uh, here's another old Filipino uh, from the from the World War II. This is a victory note. These are kind of cool. Again, made by the U.S. Mint, and it says victory in the back. That's very historic, and I was actually surprised the bills sold faster than the coins. Um, here's an old Kodak Play Sport. Not worth a ton of money. I think I sold this too cheap, but I literally used it for like three vacations, going to Jamaica, and it still worked, and it, it was at the time pretty cool because the Apple phones and, and Android phones back then were not very waterproof. So this one was toted as you can take it underwater, you can handle salt water, take it on the beach. So we did get some really cool footage without risking our, you know, five, six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollar devices. So someone picked this up and they bought it internationally. So this is going to another country, which is cool. Uh, another silver dollar and Elvis, Elvis always sells. Uh, my old alarm system for my prior home. These are a couple handholds uh, devices I had. These are worth some money. Uh, 12 bucks, perfect condition. Never had them on a keychain. Literally had them on my nightstand. Now, don't do that because if someone is trying to break my house, the, it's connected through the cell phones. So you can you don't need these anymore. But some people still like them that are not very technology oriented and they just want a simple arm it, disarm it you know, while they're walking or walking in and out of the house, which makes sense. Like if you're older and it's a little more difficult for you to run to the keypad or figure it out on your cell phone, uh, these little handheld things are great. Uh, this is a beautiful Morgan silver dollar I sold uh, for 250 bucks. I thought this coin was stunning. And the reason why it sold for more is it's kind of a rarity. It's a 1878 coin, but it has the reverse of an 1879. So it's kind of like an error. They didn't make a lot of these. And it has this beautiful toning. So anytime you have older silver coins, for those of you that don't collect coins, and they have like this cool toning, not like fake, like someone made it themselves, but like true album toning, they go for a lot more. And this was a rarity and it was in good condition. So that was, I think, my most expensive sale in the past week, maybe in the past month. Uh, some other older silver dollars, again, gorgeous condition. Um, I'm almost done selling off all my vintage uh, craftsmen and other uh, tools that are made in the USA bought a lot during the pandemic for like 20 bucks and got an entire trunk full of tools, nice tools. Like you can tell it was grandpas, great grandpas and whoever passed in that house, like that was their tools and they only bought tools made in the USA. So I did really, really, really well on that. And that was during a state sale where it was weird, weird times guys, you had to buy the item through a website and then you'd show up and they would just put it in your trunk and they ended up giving me like a lot more uh, than what I bid on just because they didn't want to, you know, I paid 20 bucks. They're like, here, just take whatever you want. Um, and then old Glade uh, spray refills, tis the season. So this one's Nutcracker. So I picked these up at a local garage sale. Guy had a bunch of them for a dollar um, a pair. And look at that, it sold for 17 bucks. So don't sleep on Glade or Old Sense. Uh, this jacket is a really nice jacket, sold for 85. Unfortunately, it doesn't fit the buyer. Uh, he's a little smaller guy. And uh, he's like, it doesn't fit. I'm like, cool, dude. Send it back. I'm definitely going to sell it. Uh, it's fall. I think it's getting cold. So I have no problem reselling that. Um, old mix CDs, like uh, freestyle or old rap CDs from the 90s and 80s, they are worth some decent money. This one doesn't even have the front cover on it, and this sold for $15. And then old Orange Crush, another silver dollar, local H, great brand, or great band, and Bush. I think I have three Bush CDs, so I found another one that's even in better condition, so I'm ask a little bit more. But again, old alternative CDs, the true ones that are actually made in the 90s. And if you don't know how to tell on a CD if it's the original release, you just want to look at the back of the CD 
and see out right there where it says 1994. That's an original. If it was a reprint or a redo, um, it would have a different year on it. So these are all authentic, like from the 90s. And obviously don't sell CDs with scratches on it. So anyways, getting really close to my goal of $300 a day in sales. And um, I do work alone. And so hopefully you guys appreciate this. I just wanted to show you with truth and honesty, like this is me. I do not do this full time. I uh, Every now and then I will actively go out and buy stuff and, and spend good money on things that I like to share with others, which are these silver dollars. So um, your sourcing might be different. Like $1,000 spending on your store might be completely insane. But for me to buy silver coins that I know are collectible and worst case, if I spend a thousand on it and I need to take them back to the coin shop, I know I at least get $800 for my thousand dollar investment. So I look at it as an opportunity to like buying really nice coins, presenting them to the public of eBay, building good rapport, taking good photos, knowing what the coins are, knowing what they're worth. So when I buy them, I try and do a, as good of a job as I can to make sure I'm buying it at the right price and something that someone will like. And worst case, if I need my money back, if I'm in a pinch, I can always bring the rest of my inventory inventory to the local coin shop and get a portion of my money back. First is you guys that will go out and, you know, you'll spend $200 a garage sale. You can't go back to the garage and be like a knock on their door and be like, hey, I bought like all this stuff from you in this garage sale. None of it sold on eBay. So um, can I get some of my money back? Um, they'll look at you like you're a crazy person and, um, just, you know what I mean? Like it's weird. <laughs> so that was weird what I just said. So anyways, guys, hopefully you appreciate my videos again. Just want to be transparent with everybody. Um, I think this is fun. I think making, you know, 43% mark, uh, uh, you know, profit. I think my profit was 35% after all fees and everything. So again, on, uh, $1,641 in sales. I made $573 in profit. I'm listing 10 items a day. My store is up, my sales are up 144%. I am promoting everything. I do do coupons or mark, you know, sometimes I'll do 10, 15, 20% sales. I'm doing everything you're supposed to. Uh, but I think the most important thing is actually listing 10 items a day. And again, it prevents you from creating a death pile. It prevents you from making poor decisions when you're buying stuff for your personal use and for reselling, especially because if you don't list 10 items a day and you just go out and buy, 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 eventually you will be on that um, hoarder show and you'll have a lot of stuff. You don't know where any of the stuff is and you'll go out of business and it'll just be a big fail. And then your family member uh, will, their family members will have to um, hire crews and put you on TV to get all the junk out of your house. I don't know. There's, that's a little extreme, but um, I like to do it myself to kind of keep myself in check. So highly recommend if you are going to resell on eBay, you don't need a lot of money. You can start with the stuff you have in your house. I recommend starting with the garage. If you have old tools, old items you purchased for projects, uh, even old, uh, cleaning supplies. You might have stuff in your garage that's brand new that you never used. Someone else could use it. Um, power tools, uh, made in USA tools, not the Harbor Freight garbage, China stuff, but like decent tools. Sell it. If, you, if you're no longer mechanically inclined to do the job and you don't need that, you, that project's you know done, uh, I bet you you have stuff in your car, your garage. Start there because who cares what's in your garage, right? Then after you've gone through your garage and you can't, and you found your 10 items and you listed it and you're done, you have everything in value or that you want to keep in your garage. Next place I would look at is your closet. Look in your hallway closet. This is the time of the year. It's fall, winter coming up. Chances are there's jackets in there. If you didn't wear them last season and you didn't wear them the season before, if you have not touched the jacket in two years, why is it in your closet? Chances are you're probably going to buy a new one because the one you had before is either damaged. If it's damaged, throw it away. 
or get it repaired, donate it. Um, if it's a decent jacket of something of value and you no longer wear it, sell it. People are buying jackets right now. Um, you might have old Halloween costumes. Halloween's coming up. Sell that stuff. Go through your closets in the hallway, the foyer, and then go in your personal closet, like in your bedroom, and just go through everything. If there's stuff in there that no longer fits and you're not on a diet, <laughs> get rid of it. Sell it. Look at the brands that are worth selling. If it's not worth selling on eBay, if it's going to be less than five bucks, I mean, if you want to sell on eBay to practice, that's great, but you probably want to donate those particular items or bundle them together to make, you know, create like a $20 listing so if you have like five shirts and you think you can sell all five for 20 bucks lot them together it'll take you you can use all 20 24 photos that ebay gives you make sure you measure them make sure you know just look at someone else's listing if you don't know how to sell clothes look at someone else's listing that is on ebay that has sold that item why have they sold it look at their pictures copy what they do measure it Again, I'm pretty sure you have over 100 items available in your house, enough to last you 10 days of listing 10 items a day. And if you're done with your closet, you're done with your garage, look in your kitchen, look in, if you have an office inside your house, look in your office. Man, there's all kinds of treasures in my office that I've gotten rid of. And then check if you have a basement or if you have an attic with old stuff laying in there. If you have old Christmas decorations that you no longer use, um, why are they still in the bin? If you're not going to use them this year, sell them. And if they are not worth selling and lotting together, donate them. Just declutter. There's no reason for you to have all this stuff. You would be better off turning this stuff into money versus you using your own money that you worked really, really hard for. And don't get me wrong, like reselling on eBay is hard work. It's not easy, but I'm pretty sure anyone watching my channel has stuff because a lot of people are like oh i don't i don't have any money and you know it's like well i'm pretty sure you do you're just it's all around you and you're like numb to it so again appreciate you guys time please like share comment let me know what you think um, i'm excited i'm gonna keep doing this 10 items a day it's it's getting me back into the game of reselling on ebay to a point where it's like pretty soon i'm gonna run out of stuff uh, in my own house to resell. Although I do have bins and I'm pretty sure I have like two, three more weeks worth of stuff at 10 items a day. Although I ran out of CDs. So I'm gonna have to start looking at more difficult items um, around my house. But then when I'm done with that, I'm gonna do some retail arbitrage. I'm next to one of the largest malls in Illinois, the Woodfield Mall. So I'd like to do a video going to the mall, finding 10 items to resell at the mall for profit. So what they call it retail arbitrage. I think that would be pretty cool. Although I'll feel kind of like a dork with a GoPro. So I'll probably just like do individual filming when I'm in the store, when I find something decent, I think that would be cool. And then tons of garage sales still not so much because school started, but there's still very many garage sales and estate sales are always happening around my area. So I'd like to do some videos on that as well, but in real life ones, not like, Oh, look at this random item. It's worth thousands of dollars. You know, if you can find that, hey, fantastic. That makes a great video. But chances are if it's worth a thousand dollars, that estate sale person knows it, right? Or it's not out in the garage sale for everyone and their mother to uh grab. And chances of you grabbing it before another reseller grabbing it is very slim to none. So I have a feeling a lot of those videos on YouTube are fake, fake news staged. I don't know. Anyways, appreciate you guys watching my channel. I will catch you on the next one.